The world is amazing. But are we really amazed? You think about the average 23-year-old today, and they don't know a world without the internet. All the information that the world has to offer is at our fingertips, easily accessible, can be consumed, and hopefully applied at the drop of a hat. For the last 12 years, I've been building robots, and my mentors have often warned me of this cliff that we might be coming to as a country, as a society. What happens when all of the knowledge held within the minds of our great engineers that run our power plants, that build our products, that keep us running, decide to retire? Who will be there to solve the problems that we have in life? Who is going to make the next great innovation? So I'm really here today to talk about <laughs> why every kid should build a robot. It makes a lot of sense to me and hopefully will to you. Now, uh, there are two things that everyone thinks about when I say the word robot, and I'd be willing to bet that most of you are thinking about this guy, right? <laughs> the Terminator, who's got two thumbs up and is into the destruction of mankind? This guy. No, that is not what I mean when I say robot. The second thing that you're probably going to think about is BattleBots. Oh man, I love fighting robots. Man, I just, I love watching them on TV. I love, love watching the robot destruction. And people always ask me, you know, Mark, are you trying to get BattleBots going? Because I love robot destruction. And I say, no, that's not what I'm talking about. So what do I mean when I say robot? Let me show you. This is a robot. It's a Lego robot. It's fully autonomous and it's built by kids. I hope that you knew that kids were building robots. These are robots. These are slightly bigger robots than the Lego robots, but they're also built by kids, thousands and thousands of kids. And this, this is a robot that I got to work on when I was a kid, actually in the year 2006. It's called the Poof Shooter. A team of, <laughs> the Poof Shooter, yes, I love the Poof Shooter. So, <laughs> I got to work on a team of 20 kids, 20, 25 kids, we had to design, build, and program this robot for competition. It's pretty fantastic. Every single year for four years while I was in high school, between 03 and 07, we would build a five foot tall, 120 pound robot just to compete, compete in Florida, compete globally at the Georgia Dome for the first world festival. It's fantastic. So what is Team Resistance like? Team Resistance was my high school robotics team. We would design, build, program robots. We worked as an interdisciplinary group of young people guided by our mentors to tackle really complex problems. And it all came down to this competition. We all wanted to win. But if you wanted to win, you had to learn how to build a machine that had the ability to compete with the other machines on the field. It's the kind of experience that you just don't get in high school. Our mentors are and our sponsors would let us know that every year we would build what amounted to a $300,000 machine just based on the man hours that go into it. And that's at a simple $10 an hour rate. How many other after school activities do our kids do today where they walk away after one year with a $300,000 opportunity that they've built? Or after four years, maybe millions of dollars worth of equipment. I tell you what, this experience got me so ed up with STEM, so focused, I knew that I was going to engineering school. I had that only one option. I was so stoked. In engineering school, I had to start our NASA competition team. Every year, NASA puts out a really fun competition where they ask for projects from all over the world. Who can dig up the most? Uh, then it was moon dirt, now it's Mars dirt. NASA wants to know who's got better ideas on how to colonize outer space, and they ask the students. So I had to start the team. It made a lot of sense because I felt like I was you know, part of something bigger. We've got private space industry coming up. And so the reason why I was really stoked on all this stuff is because of my high school robotics team. It was such a powerful experience that that was really just what it was for me. So what is this high school robotics program? Really, it's not just high school, it's K-12. It's called FIRST. And it's 26 years old. This is a program that gets American kids international kids, kids in 80 countries, designing, building, programming robots. FIRST stands for, for Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology, and is founded by a guy named Dean Kamen. Hopefully all of you know who that is. He invented the Segway, hip-mounted insulin pump for diabetics. He's got tons of patents that go into products that you might not even know you're using, and he has changed lives. 
countless lives. He had a major problem in the late 80s, and he said, maybe our culture has our young people looking to the wrong people as idols. We're worshiping all of these sports stars, these musicians, these Hollywood actors. What do they get from that? Maybe we need to change that equation, change the dynamic. Who should our kids really be looking up to? And he created FIRST as a way to get kids to look up to the engineers and the scientists and the leaders who are taking America and making it what it is. FIRST gets kids engaged, and they have a family of four programs that gets kids K through 12 designing, building, programming robots. And in order to demonstrate you know, the, how these four programs work, or really the later three, because they're competitive and for, they're for kids age nine and up, I've got some examples that go over how, how kids think creatively and what outcomes they get. So well, we're going to talk about the, the red block right here, first Lego League. Kids build an autonomous robot. They have to design and build it. They have to do a research project based on a real world question every year, a theme that is meaningful. And so I'm going to talk about Team Krakatoa. Two years ago, the entire world of FIRST was tasked with a game called Nature's Fury, where people had to figure out how to solve problems associated with natural disasters. Team Krakatoa found an orphanage nestled between not one, but two volcanoes in Nicaragua. Maybe not the best place to build an orphanage. Because when the volcanoes blew their top and the volcanic ash rained down, sometimes the orphans would be playing outside and they'd become lost, lost from the very place that they called home. Team Krakatoa, in their infinite nine and 10-year-old wisdom, said, we can help solve this problem. And what they did was they sent care packages full of whistles to every kid at the orphanage so that they could blow the whistle whenever they became lost in the ash cloud and nobody would be lost again. They could find their way back home. It's pretty in innovative, right? These are solutions that kids are coming up with. You know, problems that the adults say, oh, this is too big of a problem. Let's just move the whole orphanage. Well, maybe you can't move the orphanage. There's problems every year that these 9 and 10-year-olds or kids up to the age of 14 are solving to the degree where FIRST has a program called the Global Innovation Award, and they put up money for patentable ideas that come out of these FIRST LEGO League teams. It's a fantastic thing, and about 280,000 kids in 80 countries do it. So, FIRST Tech Challenge, my man Brandon Mack over here. We met at a, uh, a Johnson & Johnson internship that I was helping to run two years ago, and he was one of about 10 interns who got an awesome corporate experience during the summer, and then for six of the eight weeks that they were at Johnson & Johnson working to build contact lenses and learning about the corporate structure, they had to work with me to build robots. Brandon was a pretty uh, unique case because the very first thing out of his mouth was, I want to have a lot to do with the development of artificial intelligence. I think that I can make life better for people with the code that I can write. And while Brandon might not be doing that right now, there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to go there and do that. Brandon was able to put his first robotics experience that he got with us on his scholarship application and was just recently the recipient of the Bill and Melinda Gates Millennium Foundation Scholarship. If you know what that means, he gets a full ride for the entirety of his college education, all the way through PhD plus a year study abroad. He claims that the fact that he was part of FIRST Robotics helped him get that scholarship. Next, I want to talk about Garima Gupta who grew up on Team Resistance just a couple years after I did, and Garima is a fantastic young woman. She's always expressed an interest in STEM, but has really used her first robotics experience to take it to new heights. She went to Caltech, where she got her mechanical engineering degree, and became a SpaceX intern. If that's not amazing enough, she's just about to finish up her master's degree in aerospace engineering from Georgia Tech with a guaranteed position at SpaceX, waiting for her upon graduation. That is so awesome. She got the opportunity to, to work with her hands, work on an interdisciplinary team, learn how a business runs just by being on her high school robotics team and was able to carry those experiences with her the whole entire way. That's what these companies are looking for. I know for a fact that SpaceX says on their application, if you have first robotics experience or formula race car student competition team experience from college, you should put that in. Let us know because we'll look at that. Across the nation, this first program makes it so that kids are seven times as likely to become an engineer. Minorities are twice in females, four times as likely to study STEM in college. And all these high school kids have a 99% graduation rate. So can this program really be that good? 
I think the answer is yes. But across the nation, this program is only in 8% of schools. And I think that that's a problem. If you've got all of these companies saying, where are our employees? Maybe this program is the answer. I've heard all over the place, and it was published in a state of STEM report from North Florida this year, that by 2018, there's gonna be 1.8 million jobs that we as America cannot fill. The talent simply won't exist. So what are we doing? Let's talk about what Jacksonville's doing. My hometown. Back up a little bit. I graduated from the University of North Florida about four years ago. Got my engineering degree. And as you know, I was totally stoked out on robots. Really, because of the NASA team that I helped found at UNF, I really wanted to go work for Elon Musk. I wanted to go to SpaceX. But right before I applied, I came to kind of an ethical crisis. I said, Mark, you can go and build rockets in Elon's factory and make good money and have an awesome time being a world-class engineer. But at the end of the day, who will follow you? Who from Jacksonville has got the opportunity to have the same experience as you? And I said, not enough. Not only not enough, but an abysmally low number of participants locally. Four years ago, we had less than 20 teams in Jacksonville. There were no tournaments. If you wanted to start even a first LEGO League team, kids building a LEGO robot and competing, you know, it doesn't get much more simple than that. They all love it, though. You would have to drive to the Cape, to Cape Canaveral, just to compete, just to go to a practice. And so I came to a point where I was working at the University of North Florida, and we said, we've got to host a tournament. We've got to make it local. And 11 teams showed up. We felt like we had won, like we had started this, this epic fire in Jacksonville, and we've got these 11 teams, and they're, they're competing, and the kids are so excited, and it was a lot of fun. But it wasn't enough. And so I started a nonprofit with one goal in mind, to put a team, a first team, in every single school. Because I knew, as a product of the program, what the potential was for all of these kids. You know, what are the kids doing with their time? What are the skills that we need them to have? Is pass, dribble, and shoot enough? Or is design, build, and program what they really need? In the last four years, there's been a renaissance. In the last four years, we've come from 20 teams to 170 teams across 20 counties. This has been guided by the desire to turn North Florida into bar none, the STEM capital of the world. So I've got this vision, this vision that is guiding this epic push to build a robotics team in every school. And it looks something like this. I want 6,500 kids a year, minimum, participating in competitive robotics. The sport for the mind. We can use Jacksonville as a prototype for learning how to take our country to the next level. If you make it so that this program exists in every single school, in multiples, you will bar none change the equation for what these kids want to be in life. You're going to change where they put their time and their energy. You're going to make it so that the companies around the world who are looking for those next employees, that next innovator, that next patent, they're going to look to a place like Jacksonville and say, maybe we should move to Jacksonville. I know that we've not made the top five or top ten lists for a place to plant your new business, but we will be. We're going to get to this vision. It's not going to be easy. We're talking about 170 teams this year. That's about 15 to 1,700 kids in 20 counties designing, building, programming robots. What if they all turn out like Brandon and Garima? What if we got 1,500 Brandons and Garimas going around here? I want to know what that world's like. You know, we've got so much momentum that it's, um, it's almost a guarantee. So if you're looking to build your next rocket factory, Elon, put it in Jacksonville. We're two hours away from the Cape. You know, we need university support. And I'm happy to announce, I was told by the president of JU that I could say that next year there's going to be a six-figure scholarship package for first participants to come to Jacksonville and go to school. And so I say to the rest of America, if you want to know how to get this done, how to build this in your community, I'm all ears. I'll help. We can help because we can show you how we do it here in North Florida. 
You guys ready to do this? All right. Let's get it done. 300 teams by 2021.